Yo, what's good, y'all? This video, we're going to be talking about extend pressure and um, why I've been liking using extend pressure instead of full court pressing in my games. Now, you guys know I like to press. I like to speed up my opponent. But the press has been kind of broken and it's kind of easy to beat in certain situations. But extend pressure does exactly what I needed to do, which is make my opponent rush and get the ball out of their main scorer's hand. So in order to set this, you go to your defensive settings. You're going to head over to the specific player. Scroll down and you're going to select extend pressure right over here to the left and put it on. Yes, I like to put it on their main ball handler or their guard. So either the point guard and shooting guard or if it's just Kobe, I'll put it if they only use Kobe a lot or Adam Morrison, I'll put extend pressure on them. But whoever they're going to be using, uh, controlling the ball with coming up the court and they like to initiate their offense. with. So it's going to depend on who you're playing. So I'll put it on a starting point guard and shooting guard, but I'll also put it on the backup point guard and shooting guard and my goal is to make them bring the ball up with someone else by putting pressure on this person so right here as you can see they got the ball with penny hardaway i have extend pressure on dante's even or, or on penny hardaway with dante divincenzo what it's going to do is make dante play up everybody else is back which is what i like because if we get beat up the court only one player is beat whereas if you press your whole team's beat and they can just rim run i don't like that so because the defense reacts so bad but I will click on and create bumps and force them into a situation where they have to give the ball up. And I love when they have to give the ball up because now they have to run the offense with somebody else. So right here again, Magic Johnson was his main scorer, a main ball handler. He didn't have anybody on the court else that he wanted to dribble the ball with or initiate plays with. Magic Johnson also has a slower shot. So if the ball is out of his hands, you can sag off or gap Magic Johnson and play four players or five players in the lane more and make them have to kick it out to him for a shot. So I'm going to on ball, bump them up the court and stay with them so that if they try to get the ball back to them, I will intercept that pass. So you want to make them bring the ball up with somebody else. This is wasting their shot clock time. Once they get it to the player that they wanted to give it to, you now have pressure on them and they're trying to do whatever they can do with that player because they finally got it to them. And sometimes they're going to make mistakes like we saw in that play right here. Next play. Devin Booker. This is somebody that I always extend pressure on now that I started doing this. Dante DiVincenzo going to bump him all the way up the court, make him have to give the ball up. It's amazing how many people just pass the ball instead of trying to go against that bump pressure. They want to get the ball out of that person's hand so they don't have to deal with it. And I love that because that's what I want them to do. I know with Giannis they don't, the way people play, they don't want to just go to the rim with Giannis. They want to fade with Booker. They want to run around screen. So I know they want to get the ball back to Booker. So I'm going to on ball Booker myself, not on ball, but one pass away. I'm denying Booker the ball. They try to get Booker back the ball. I'm trying to steal this pass. I miss it right here, but I get a, I get a bump. Dante gets the steal. Another mistake by the offensive player. We get a transition bucket on that. Next play against another opponent. Same thing. We got Devin Booker on the court. I actually have Karl Malone on him right now. He bumps a little bit more because he's stronger. So we're going to get the ball out of Devin Booker's hands too. We're bumping ourselves. We got 94 feet. You really want that Hall of Fame or gold 94 feet badge if you're going to extend pressure. Whoever you're extending pressure with needs to have this badge so that they can create pressure all the way up the court and they don't get blown by. So Karl Malone has this. We make him give the ball up. Now we're going to switch to Wimby. And when he goes to pass it back to Booker, we're going to try to steal that pass. We get the steal and we're off to the races once again. So extend pressure is really just a full court press, but masking it. You really want to make sure they're not getting the ball into their main ball handler's hand. You want to use a control, bump them, bump them, get some reaching fouls, try to get the ball away, make them give the ball up. It's going to waste the shot clock. And they're going to have to get the ball back to their main shot creator somehow. That gives you more chances to get steals. If Devin Booker just walks up the court and is able to call a screen, go around the screen and shoot fades, that's easier for the offensive player. Make it harder for them. All you can do is make possessions harder. As the game gets further and further, cards get more stronger and stronger. You have to make possessions harder for the offensive player. And you have more chances of getting steals and missed shots. Shot clock violations and stuff like that are going to be your turnovers rather than getting a uh, a stop on a pick and roll. That's very hard to come by as players get better and better. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you like it, if you're going to use extend pressure. I appreciate y'all, man. Peace.